I might have made a bit of a mistake here. I've been meaning to turn up a new handbill for the lathe ever since I moved into this workshop. You see, the plastic one that it came with kind of broke. Okay, maybe twice. I bought a 100mm piece of aluminium to turn into a replacement. 100 by 50 ish. The cut's a little lopsided. Now, it should be pretty obvious that we aren't going to be able to chuck this in the lathe. Even with the external jaws fitted, the largest I could chuck is about 80 mils. Now, I'm sure there's many methods for turning oversized stock. The one that I'm going to use here is one that just worked well for me. So far pretty straightforward. We have two centre holes, one on each side in the centre and two brass standoffs. These will act sort of like a lathe dog. Back on the lathe we'll set the compound to 30 degrees so we can cut a temporary centre from some brass stock. We can now mount the workpiece between the two lathe centers, and now we're effectively turning between centers. The lathe jaws will act as our drive plate to help turn the workpiece. The only slight problem is that the stock was a little bit lopsided, meaning that the part was being held at a slight angle when I was drilling the center holes on the drill press. Holding it in a vise would have negated this, but we have a lot of stock to remove, so it shouldn't be an issue. For the roughing passes, I'll use this high-speed steel roughing tool with a ground and chip breaker. Aluminium is a pretty stringy material and getting it to break a chip can be very difficult. I've set the lathe to run at its lowest speed and surprisingly the vibrations from the part were pretty minimal.
With the roughing done and most of the material removed, I'm going to switch to some insert tooling. I really like the surface finish that you get from carbide tooling, even if it doesn't break a chip. And that's the first side done. I was very impressed with this method, however if I was regularly turning between centres, I would rather invest in a faceplate or a drive plate than use the chuck jaws. The biggest disadvantage to turning between centres is that the area near the centres can't be turned, however this area will be removed when I drill it out. I've gone and turned the part around and chucked it in the forejaw, with some copper jaw liners to prevent any marring on the soft aluminium. The first operation that I need to do is face it, and then take it down to final dimension. Next I need to bore out the centre of the wheel to remove the holes that were used for the brass standoffs. The cutting here is done with a custom boring bar made from a drill shank very similar to one seen in a previous video. A custom tool is great here because it can accommodate some very specific clearance angles. Now I still need to hold the work on the drill press, but instead of holding it in a vise, I'll simply mount the chuck to the drill press table. Finally, we need a handle. The Machinery's Handbook has tables for machine handles, as do other books. However, I'll be reproducing the stock handle in aluminium.
and I'll finish up by boring the inside for the head of the machine screw. Finally, it's time to assemble. I'll hold the screw in place using some thread lock, and if needed, it can be easily broken using either acetone or heat. Well, I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with that. The set screw does a really good job at holding the hand wheel to the tail stock. And the extra weight in the hand wheel is a big improvement over the plastic one. There's a lot more momentum in the hand wheel which makes it a lot nicer to use and much much more sturdier. I also checked the chuck to make sure there wasn't any wear or damage and the run out was unaffected. It's pretty much like it was before, though a drive plate would really be handy in the future. Well I hope you enjoyed this video and like always, thank you for watching.